up by the heavenly here. Listen, listen, I know I ain't dressed up today, but it's okay. You know why? Because I'm competent, I'm disciplined, and I'm consistent. Those are the three keys to success. You keep doing the same thing the same time and you're competent with it, you're destined for success, okay? Okay, tonight we got an extra special guest for y'all because I'm going to tell y'all a 45 version. I was on Twitter one night and the kids had got shot in school, shot at the school, right? And I tweeted, just tweeting, I said, put prayer back in school. I didn't know that many people were against prayer. I did not know. I got 9,000 comments on that Twitter, one day, one Twitter feed. And so many people were against prayer in school. Now, mind you, I didn't say who to pray to. I didn't say what to pray. Even a moment of silence would have did me satisfaction. But the people got so angry, you would have thought if I would have said shoot the people in school. So you know what? I wanted to talk about it. This is weeks later. I wanted to talk about it. Are so many people against prayer? Because I, I just assume, well, I know that most people believe in something. They believe in something. Okay, I'm a believer, firm believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my savior. But people believe in something. If you could do a, a prayer, you know, to the, well, just pray. But put prayer back in school. So I needed to talk about that. And um, before we start, I need to do my laundry list. You know, my um, housekeeping, if you will. Heavenly Beauty. Make sure I get your hat wigs, all your hair. Heavenly Beauty. Um, and, you know, I got you on the smile. Smiles by Dr. Heavenly. And guys, if y'all interested in investing, definitely Novatech, okay? We got Novatech here. And, um, you know, 3% a week is what I've been doing. So make sure y'all check that out. I have the link in the bio. In fact, it's going down on the banner, the link right there. And I'll put it in my um, description box as well, the link to Novatech. And the great thing about me with Novatech is I got somebody to assist you to join. So that's fine. All right. So without further ado, I got to um, talk about my friend. She's here. She's here, right? Hey, hey. Oh, God, I was gonna introduce you, but baby, you just pop right on in. <laughs> this my good friend, Jewel Tanker. <laughs> She's my spiritual advisor. Y'all know I need it, right? <laughs> I don't know. Y'all gotta tell her how good a job she's doing. I don't know if she's doing that well with it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love you. you but great. Jewel, listen. Yes. I was on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, right after the kids got shot in the school. Remember the kids got shot? Yeah. And there was this young guy that shot the children. And I put on my Twitter feed, put prayer back in school, right? Yeah. I didn't think no big deal about it. I got 9,000 comments of people that were against prayer, almost like it's a Rihanna Navy against prayer or a beehive against prayer, right? And I was baffled. Because I didn't say who to pray to. I didn't say what you had to pray. You would have thought I would have said everybody get guns and shoot up the school. I was so baffled and confused. Then I mean, they were cussing at me. They were saying, well, you know what? Where's God when those kids got put out of school? They got killed. Why would God allow this to happen? And so I didn't have all the answers. And I know what I was thinking. You know, y'all take God out of everything. But I wanted to hear your thought on it. Should we put prayer back in school, Jewel? Yeah, I mean, that's so sad to me that you just simply said we need to pray and you got cussed out by 9,000 people. I think it also shows that there's been a huge erosion of um, just morality, right and wrong. is just very, very great. Let me turn down my volume because I just started. Um, you know, I think that everything is just so great. And I think, like you said, if you would have said, okay, why don't you go shoot up somebody, then they might have said, okay. So I think we can't listen to the masses to get our instruction on what is right and wrong. Obviously, killing is very wrong. And I just think about when my grandmom and them was coming up, they had prayer in school and they didn't have that kind of foolishness. I mean, just go back and look at history. Look at the last 20 years, 30 years. We didn't have all of that foolishness going on 20, 30, 40 years ago. This is something as of recent. And, you know, over, I think about a decade ago, they removed prayer from school. So you can, some of it is just like deductive reasoning. Let's think it through. Let's look at history. Let's look at what's changed. And the biggest thing that I can see that's changed is that prayer has been removed from school. I would agree with you. Prayer is definitely, but my thought is don't most people believe in something? I didn't even say who yes. to pray to. Yeah. Most I mean, most people do. Most people do believe in something. And, and I think most people realize that 
um, you know, there is a God out there or universe or whoever they, re you know, may refer to it. But I think most people realize that there's something greater than you and that you need that help. You know, that's what I would think most people. So I, I'm a little baffled at that kind of ridiculous commentary from 9,000 comments talking about why are you saying to pray? Like, duh, because this stuff happened. And it, and it ain't just happening once or twice. It's happening repeatedly throughout the United States of America, repeatedly. And it's like they're getting younger and younger. It's like makes no sense at all. So I think these kids, unfortunately, are getting into all, I remember there was this movie, I don't know if you saw it, but it was about these two boys that got real, real heavy into like real dark games like Dungeons and Dragons, and they murdered their parents. And basically when they were on trial, they were like, what made you kill your parents? Because all the neighbors, everybody was blown away because it seemed like they were a decent family. So it's like, what happened? And they were like, well, the game told me that that was the next step in order for me to get there. So I think these kids are into some real, real, real crazy, spooky, dark stuff that if we don't get a hold of it and something doesn't change, unfortunately, I think we're going to continue to see really, really craziness happen. Wow. Wow. So what would you to say to someone when they said to me, where was God when these kids got killed? Where was he at? Like, how did he allow this to happen? What would you say to somebody if they said that to you? I mean, it's almost kind of like you kicked him out. You kicked him out of school. You kicked him out of the courtroom. Like he's literally been kicked out of everything. So you can't say, OK, I don't want God. But then when something happened, where was God? You know what I'm saying? It's like, you got to make up your mind what you want. So if you want him, then you can say, okay, I expect when I leave my house, I expect when my family leave this house, they're protected, right? Because I believe in a God that protects, according to Psalms 91. I expect that because I have a relationship with him. But I can't expect him to show up for me if there's no relationship. If I've said, I don't want nothing to do with you, like you got to make up your mind. So I think people just like to find a scapegoat, unfortunately, when bad things happen. And I think people also need to know that there are real uh, demonic forces out there that are sent to oppose and bring fear and bring destruction and bring death. I think it is a very, very, very real thing. And so when bad things happen, it's never from God. He is a good God. When bad things happen, it comes from the enemy. And I think people have to understand there's a real opposer out there. The ones you sick, the ones you broke, the ones you mad, the ones you angry. Um, we have a real opposer. So I think when bad things happen, it needs to be, okay, I need to start taking my authority in God and bind up all this demonic activity that's happening because that's exactly what it is. It's, it, it, it's insane. It's insane. It's like the world is changing. Do you think we're living in hell right now? I mean, on earth? Because I mean, I can't see it get any worse. And I'm going to just say reality TV. I'm going to say the music. I mean, you can't say nothing worse than what we said in this music right now. I mean, we talk about bad tail and put it out there and pee in it and all of that. It can't get no worse. So I would think it would have to get better, right? <laughs> No, I mean, I think a lot of these things were in the Bible, Heavenly. It told us that there would be wars, women's of wars, killings, all the stuff that we're seeing happening. I think that I believe in the rapture, and I think there's going to come a time. I don't know when it is. I can't say I know when it is because I don't. But I do think there's going to come a time where God's going to come back for his people. And then that's when they talk about the seven years of tribulation. And then that's where the, the push is going to be for the mark of the beast, 666. Uh, to be in order for you to do any kind of business at all. And I think a lot of even what we're seeing in the digital space is kind of preparing us for um, the last days. So I do think we're living in the last days. Things are definitely worse. I think if you talk to any of our elders, they will all tell you it was they had some crazy stuff going on, but not like this. This is definitely next level. Because with all the scam, you know, wait a minute, I need to go to break. They got me, they they timing me, we got to pay some bills. Listen, I'll be right back with Heaven Help Us with Jewel Tanker. And we're going to talk about this market of beast, y'all. We'll be right back. Heaven Help Us.
we back. Heaven help us listen. So, Jewel, we're talking about wars and rumors of wars and the mark of the beast. Now, with so many scams out there, right? And the, and the value of the dollars means nothing. Do how close and how do you believe? Well, you got to believe because it's in the Bible that we'll have one universal currency and that people will stop using the U.S. dollar and put the mark right on your right hand or your forehead, correct? Yeah, I think that from the way I understand it, okay, but from the way I understand it, the mark of the beast is not going to be pushed until after the first draft, if you will, leaves. So after everybody who, you know, believes in God, God comes back, cracks the sky, and then we're all up. Then the people that are left behind, and you can even see they have movies out there called The Rapture. Mel Gibson did a couple movies on The Rapture in the last days where all of a sudden people would just like disappear. They would all be gone. The Bible says in a twinkling of an eye. And so then at that point, it's going to be confusion. They talk about it's going to be accidents on the freeway. You know, you have some family members who maybe did not ever receive God into their lives. And so, you know, they'll be back here. And so that's when you're going to really start to see real, real pandemonium happen like never before. And that's where there's going to be pressure to get the mark of the beast. Because if you don't get the mark of the beast, it's almost like not having a credit card. You won't have access to food. You won't have access to gas. You won't have access to just basic resources. So there's going to be a lot of pressure to get the mark of the beast. I do believe there are going to be people that are here that kind of realize what happened. And they're going to try to create their own economy or kingdom, if you will, to kind of band together, you know, um, so that they don't have to get the mark of the beast because- Right, uh, the they said they would go up to the mountains. I'm telling you. Up in the mountains. That's what it's in the Bible. I read that they go into the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I know the word. Yeah, I, mean, I know the word. You know the word, girl. Yes. That's on period. But, um, but yeah. But the interesting thing is I saw a PSA today on chemical warfare that they put out to New York. Is that shocking? And I mean, what can we do other than pray? And I think that most of our kids spend most of their awakened hour in school. Remember, a lot of religions will pray three times a day. I know that when I go to the African stores, they'll stop in the middle of the day to pray. So how wrong is it to say public schools, separation of church and state, but still, what is it going? Is it going to hurt you to pray? That's the thing. I, you know, I don't. Why are so you know, many people so against it? So against, I think they're just confused and just don't know. I mean, I think about my life before I really became a person of prayer, and it was a mess. You know, I tried to do a lot of stuff on my own and fix stuff and stuff like that. It was just a mess. And so I said, okay, Lord, I've tried everything else. Let me try you. And it was the best thing I could have did. So, I mean, it's definitely not going to hurt. You know what I mean? It's not going to hurt you. So I, I don't know. I think people are just hurt. I think people are angry. I think a lot of people are confused. And when people do that, they look for somebody to blame. And so God is that person that they end up just blaming. But if they would stop and think about it, like I said, just ask your elders that they have all this stuff going on. You know, when my grandma, my grandmother just moved to heaven in, in December, but before she passed, I would talk to her about a lot of stuff that's happening. And she she left here at 98 years old. And so she had a lot of wisdom. And she was just like, All I can tell you is stay close to me. She said, I did not see the stuff that I'm seeing now. She said, it just, she said, it just overtakes my heart. She said, because we grew up in a completely different time in a completely different day. And the the opposition that humanity has at large today. She said it's really scary. It's so scary, Jewel, because we have something called the Internet. So it's all over information, right? But have, have you noticed that certain places you cannot show social media to on the Internet, like certain places in Africa, certain places in Russia, they don't want the information sent out everywhere, right? And have you noticed, like it used to be a time when I had my cell phone, it would work all the time. Now with so many problems with the connection and the internet connection, it's like the world is setting up for something and they yeah, have control right. of everything. Right. And we have the theory and all of that. All the people here in all our conversations, they know what's going on. They got cameras everywhere. What are they preparing for? I think we are preparing for that one world order. I think we are preparing. I, I, I think... I don't know if people really know what they're preparing for, but I think 
on the inside, there's a rumbling that people know something is happening. They can't necessarily put their finger on it. They may not even be able to really articulate it with you know English words, but they know there is something happening. And they want to make sure they're on the right side of that thing. And so even though you got a lot of opposition, and I hate, you know, that my friend had to go through that, but I think at the same time, there has to be voices in the earth that bring peace. And one thing about God, he is always about peace. He is always about prosperity. And he is always about his protection and wisdom. And so um, there's a scripture in the Bible, Romans, that talks about those that are the sons of God. In other words, or you could say sons or daughters, right? Near you and a lot of people in here watching are led by the spirit of God. And so I think that we're in a time now where if you have any kind of God in you, God is like, speak up. The Lord is like, speak up, speak out, bring hope, bring peace, bring comfort, right? And I think that's why we see, you know, people dealing with anxiety at an all-time high. Anxiety is at an all-time high. Depression is at an all-time high. And unfortunately, a lot of the medication that is being prescribed for is not necessarily the to totality of the answer. I'm not saying that it doesn't have a place, but I'm saying that I think you have to be careful because sometimes there are voids that are on the inside of us that nobody else can fill that void but God. Yes. That anxiety, yeah. nobody else can comfort it but God. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, and it's got to be power in prayer in numbers. So there's a reason they're trying to keep a numbers of people from praying together. And I eat in school. Like they're trying to separate prayer out of everything. So it's no prayer. And it's got to be the beast, the devil, whatever you want to call it, the negative spirit, the darkness, you know, because what is it hurting you to pray? No. Oh. You're absolutely right. And the thing I, I want to bring out um, in, like, when you look at the Bible, like, when you looked at, like, Moses, the Bible talks about Moses went out to the, up to the mountain, talked to God. You see Nehemiah went up to the mountain, talked to God. But once the New Testament hit, everything was corporate prayer. Everything was corporate. You saw, you know, Jesus himself, who had 12 disciples, he asked them, can you pray with me? Um, there are so many different accounts in the Bible in Acts chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 1 where you see God saying, come on, let's fast and pray together. So to me, if he needed some some his disciples to pray with him, how much more? I can pray by myself, but what happens when it's me and you and Dr. Jada and Dr. Jackie and so on and so forth? When we come together and say, hey, we are all believing and standing for this one thing or these two things or these three things. And I think the best thing that anybody can do, if you're not praying already, get with a prayer group, you know, find a, you know, a good local church home where you can get together and just try it. That's what I did. I remember when I first was like, okay, I'm really about to give my life to God. I was like, I'm just going to try it. If it don't work, then quit. But at least try it and say, because I need some peace. And I want when my children leave out of the door, I don't want to be a nervous wreck. I want to trust in a God bigger than me. So when they're in another country or another city or whatever, I know God's hand and his angels are with them because I can't be everywhere at the same place. So I think for so many different reasons, we all really need to be praying and we need to find a group of people that believe like us um, so that we can walk in peace. I believe in these last days. Okay. And, and I agree with you 1000%, but why don't people pray? For example, I, you know, you know, I'm on TV, I'm on the show, right? And I spoke to some of the ladies and I was saying, you're having relationship issues, right? Have y'all tried praying together? They didn't even think of that. Why don't people pray together? Like the power of a couple praying, getting on their knees and praying together, that's so powerful because God says when two or more are there, right? He's also yeah. in the midst. If you pray by yourself, that's great. I say pray, meditate every day. But if you got somebody that's connected to you, like a spouse, your mama, whoever, and y'all pray together, there's power in prayer. And our little children need to learn to pray or have prayer outside of the home, inside of the home. They spend most of their waking hour at school, the summer school, whatever. What's wrong with at lunchtime or in the morning in announcements is saying, you know what? We don't know what denomination you are, what you believe in, but let's take a moment of silence to whatever you believe. Yeah. 
to pray. Right. Now we got to go to one more commercial break. We'll be right back, but I got one more question for you. I got one more question and we'll be right back, okay? Right back after okay. these messages. gospel of Jesus Christ. I never was exposed to that. And the Bible says to me, without him, there's no way to heaven. There's a narrow road to heaven. But I never got the experience of learning about Jesus Christ. What happens to me? What happens to my soul? Now, from what I understand, everyone at some point will have an opportunity to hear about the gospel of Jesus. Now, they'll have to make a decision on, you know, if they receive it. Now, I think, you know, if a child died or something like that, but I think once you become an adult, where you can make the decision, I think because there's a difference between saying, okay, I got Jesus, I receive you as savior, and then I receive you as master. And master is, I'm gonna allow you to begin to, I'm gonna cooperate with you to change me from the inside out. Or like when I first got saved, I was still wretched. I was still doing a lot of wretched stuff. But I still had Jesus in my in my heart because I received him and I repented of all my sins. So I believe if I would have died right then, I would have still went to heaven. Even if I was smoking a joint, drinking in the bed with somebody, whatever. If I received Jesus, because it's not my works, it's not my behavior that gets me into heaven. It's my belief in him. And so now for the people that haven't received him, I mean, I believe what the Bible says, and the Bible says, if you do not believe or you have not received that Jesus Christ is Lord and you die, because this is what the Bible says, not Jewel, but that you will go to hell. But suppose I'm a good person and I did help other people and I've done all that, and you out there smoking and drinking and having sex and killing people and stealing, but you believe, but I didn't get exposed to it or my mama, because you basically believe what you what you learn. You're taught to believe what you believe. Am I going to hell and you and you going to heaven and you smoking and drinking and having <laughs> sex and, and, and stealing? And I'm a good person. I'm helping people. What do you say to that? Because that don't even sound right to me. and don't seem fair. What is that about? Well, because I don't I don't think heaven or hell is about a good or a bad person. I think heaven or hell is about a Jesus. I think it's a Jesus issue. It's, it's, not, it's not a behavior issue. It's not a good person or a bad person. I think it is all about a Jesus issue. Because if not, if it wasn't a Jesus issue, then bad people, you know what I mean? I don't think, like I said, I don't think it's good or bad. Because who weighs that? Who weighs what's good or bad, right? Who says that? So maybe one person, you know, is maybe using cocaine. And that doesn't mean it's good, but if they receive Jesus, that's a heaven or hell issue. Now, they're still going to have to have the consequences of maybe having their body jacked up, maybe a lot of the, or the layers of hell. I don't think they're layers of hell. I think it's just oh. hell. Okay, I mean, so I, that's I, the say, I, I the Let me say that. I mean, I'm, huh? I'm listen, listen, I'm just saying what the words say, but I've never read about layers of hell. I just read that there was a hell. Now we might get there, or somebody. I ain't gonna be there. Right, <laughs> right, right. We never know that, right? I ain't gonna figure right. it out unless the Lord give it to me in a dream. But it, <laughs> but I think it's just a hell. So I don't think it's a good or bad issue. I think it's a Jesus issue. My last point is this: like, okay, back in the day, we could never even fathom certain things, like when the Bible said that every man will witness. You know, like you're thinking about it. How can every man witness? the coming of Jesus Christ, right? But then you look at the internet and you look at the TV and you look at the big screens on the uh, New York Times Square 
And now it makes more sense than it ever could have two, three years, hundred years ago. Every man will witness. How they gonna see it? I'm here, you there. But now we got the internet. We got the so everything in the Bible looks like it's coming to pass. Like whoever wrote that thing knew what they was talking about. I mean, I know it was God influenced because the people say man wrote the Bible, but everything in it is happening. You know what I'm saying? You can see how the market of is coming. You can see how, you know, we're going to see everything. You can see how everybody would get to the word eventually through the internet, through the TV, yep. through the, the waves or whatever, what you have, you got, and how people can get to different countries easily. But you yep. can also see the negative impact of that as well with the internet and it being limited, with yep. the television and being limited. Information is out there, but now they have a way of limiting it. And I think that's very interesting. You know, yeah. No, and why is there a PSA out in New York about chemical warfare? Like, if there's a chemical bomb, this is what you do. Like, I don't like that. Like, you know, you know, they keep a lot of information from us. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's too many things happening that I don't know. But one thing I do know is I know God is omni. I know He's omnipresent. I know He's omnipotent. Um, I know he's all knowing and all powerful. And I know that when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, he said, I'm giving you that same authority. We're living in a day and time now where you got to know that wherever I go, whether I'm on the elevator with 11 people, whether I'm at the mall, at the festival, I'm talking about wherever you go, I am conscious and aware that I got angels with me and I got God with me. Because at any point, like you said, with that chemical warfare, unfortunately, just like COVID, I think COVID was man-made. I definitely think, I think all the variants were man-made. You know what I mean? Um, I even looked at, uh, we were kind of looking at some stuff. I was talking to some doctors about this and they were talking about the vaccine, how it was call it causing mutation. And all of a sudden, all these black people were starting to get blood clots. Like, it's just, I said all that to say, it's so much out there that all I know is I need a savior, I need a protector. I need a deliverer because you don't know what you're going to run into. But I know with God in my life, he is going to find a way to always for me to make a way of escape out of any kind of mess, any kind of situation. And not just me, but my family, my children. You got three children. You want to make sure, Lord, wherever they are, protect them. I mean, ain't no wrong with praying now. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you say, God, protect my children? God, protect so them. So what you're telling me is I have the power within me to speak things over my children. God gave me that right, that power that's in my bloodline that I that's have the power to do these things. Not just speak things into my children as far as like health, which is so important, but also wealth and happiness and, and, and mind, sane mind, uh, you know what I mean? A sound mind. All these things you're saying is given to me if I speak it and I believe it. That all of it's been given it to us. Do you know how many children out here, unfortunately, are committing suicide? You want to pray, God, keep their mind. Give them, give them godly relationships. Order their steps. Keep them from harm, hurt, and danger. Let them be able to go to sleep at night. People, you know, people are on medication for just going to sleep. But yeah. you just the Bible that says he will give you sound sweet sleep. Mm. So, yeah, I mean... I want to lay hold of all these covenant promises. I'm not trying to do this thing on my own. I don't want to act independent of God. I am dependent on him. I let him know every day, I need you. <laughs> I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Yes, and you know, that's our time. But before we go, I want to know how, well, first of all, we got to pray. Pray for the world. Pray for our children. Pray for our sound mind, because y'all know I need it. And also, yeah, just pray for the world because I don't know what's happening in the world. It's, it's messed up. But pray for prayer in school. Yes. And gun yes. control. Yes. Woo. I ain't going to say pray for abortion because I don't know how the Lord feel about that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I pray that we have the, 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 the right to choose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we should all, I think God gives us all free choice. Period. Yes. My prayer would just be for any women that find them. First of all, give them the choice. Period. Because God gives us the choice. He right. doesn't make us do anything. That's first. Secondly, I pray that for women that maybe find themselves in crazy predicaments, maybe rape, incest, or maybe they just don't want to have it, to maybe adopt 
Because I just yes. think about what if my mom would have gotten rid of me or you just to give. I, I would have still been here. I would have came another way, but that's just me. That's what I think. I think I still would have been here because the Lord needed me to come before the universe was designed. He had heavenly in mind. I truly yes. believe that. I no, can you lead us in prayer, Jewel? Because I need, I know you go, you need about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that to the people. I ain't You're right. That. Right. I'm joking. Father, Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for heavenly. I thank you for her heart for you. I thank you for these precious people, God, that are up under the sound of this live right now. And God, I just pray the blood of Jesus cover humanity, the blood of Jesus cover the nations, the blood of Jesus cover President Biden and Vice President Harris. God, I just plead the blood of Jesus now over the Supreme Court, the blood of Jesus over our court system, the blood of Jesus over our educational system, the blood of Jesus. God, I plead the blood. Lord, I declare now, I release the power of God. I release the fire of God. I release the anointing of God that destroys jokes, that removes burdens. God, I thank you, Lord. I command a fear to leave our hearts now. I command anxiety to go. I command depression to go. I I command oppression to go and I release supernatural peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God that surpasses all logic. I declare right now in the name of Jesus, everyone up under the sound of my voice that has been dealing with trauma or drama of any kind, I release peace over them now in Jesus' name. I release the spirit of comfort over them right now in Jesus' name. God, where they had mental a fog. I declare clarity right now in the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural clarity. I declare supernatural wisdom. Give them instruction. Order their steps. God, I pray that you bless every parent. Give every mother, every father the wisdom of God to parent their children, to have authentic conversations about the things that are happening today. Order their steps, oh God, help us. Holy Ghost, we need your help. You're the great teacher. You're the great counselor. You're the great therapist. God, we look to you to heal us. We look to you to help us. We look to you to strengthen us. Strengthen us in our inner man. Strengthen us in our physical man. Give us boldness and courage to speak out about those things that are right in Jesus' name. God, I pray now that when people come in contact with us, that they experience your presence. They experience your love. They experience your comfort. Let us be walking epistles of the word of God. That when people come into our presence, they leave feeling valuable. They leave feeling important. They leave feeling they would have a sense of worth and destiny and purpose. Reveal our purpose. Reveal our destiny. God, I prophesy now that the next six months of this year would be supernatural, that they would experience supernatural increases, supernatural favor. Those that need a job, give them a job. Those that are running businesses, cause their business to increase. Those that need a place to stay, God, open up stores for them to live in residences and environments, God, that will nurture the gifts and the talent that are on the inside of them right now in Jesus same. Now, God, I pray for every single parent. I pray you help the single parents, that you give them a support system, that you send them nannies and babysitters and those that will help them and support them with their children, especially those that are teenagers. God, keep the teenagers from hurt, harm, and danger. Break addiction now in Jesus' name. Give them a sound mind. And God, I just release angels now to cause all these things to come to pass. I pray that you bless Heavenly and Damon and their family. I pray that you bless the caster to medicine. I pray that you minister to their hearts, God, right where they are. Let them experience your love. Let them know that you love them with an unfailing love. And there's nothing they can do to change that. And God, we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. I received that and I feel it. And I there is power in prayer anywhere you're at. Wherever you're at, you yes. should be allowed to pray. I firmly yes. believe that, Jewel. Yes. Now, and I you God, bless Oliver. God bless Oliver. Bless and you, Oliver. Too. Bless Oliver. Him. Oliver. Keep him healthy. Keep him happy. Keep yes. him contented every way possible. Sound heart, sound mind. We yes. never know what people are going through. He's very yes. strong, but you check on that lion. You check on that yes. strength. And we yes. bless you, Oliver. Supernatural yes. increase, Oliver. Supernatural, Supernatural increase. increase. 
Amen. 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 We find you. Okay, so everything is Jewel Tankard. Um, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all Jewel Tankard. And you can get on jeweltankard.com uh, to check out all my stuff. I appreciate you. Your prayer is powerful. You're a powerful woman of God. Um, we've been friends a long time, and I appreciate you and everything you've done for me and all the prayer and all the increase you've brought me as well. And guys, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if, you list, if you're interested in investing, please get at me. I have some supernatural things that um, can help you with investing. Um, and we got it ro rolling down at the bottom here on the screen. But Lord Jesus, we thank you. And uh, I thank you for your time, Jewel. And I'll call you later, boo. Okay. Love you, boo. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.